biggest South Asian media group, Y Media. Hello everyone, my name is Yudhir Jaswal. I'm the group editor at Y Media. On behalf of Y Media, I'd like to welcome you all on this very special broadcast on Y Media. Y Media Main Street Poll Survey. Yes, we will be conducting poll surveys and we'll be broadcasting on Y Media. We have partnered with the, one of the leading public opinion and research firm, Main Street. Main Street was founded in 2010. And uh, at this point, I'll also like to welcome the president and CEO of Main Street, Kuto Maggi. Kuto, a very warm welcome on Y Media. Sir, how are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. This is an exciting partnership. Good. I look forward very welcome. to and, uh, uh, doing Also this. joining us as the, the panelist, Kimberly. Kimberly, a very warm welcome. How are you? I'm well, thank you, Yuvir. Thank you for having me. Welcome. Kimberly is also the, <clears throat> excuse me, the political commentator here. And uh, today on this uh, poll survey, we have done some poll survey uh, and Main Street uh, has helped us in that. We've done the poll surveys in Brampton, Mississauga and Caledon. Uh, there are three questions that we wanted to address. Uh, we all know uh, Bonnie Crombie, she's been uh, now elected as the Liberal Party leader in Ontario. So there are quite a few candidates. Where does this take us from here? Uh, who is leading as far as the Mississauga mayoral race is concerned? We'll start with that. After that, we will be discussing if the provincial elections were held today, where do the PCs stand as far as Brampton, Mississauga, and Caledon is concerned? And finally, we would be addressing if federal elections were held today, where does the conservative, liberal, or NDP, or even Green Party, where do they stand? So three questions. I think, uh, Quito, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think so. Uh, this is the biggest poll survey that has ever been done. Quito. Yeah, certainly one of the biggest uh, we've done in a while in uh, across Peel region. Um, like you said, Mississauga, Brampton and Peel um, asking three ballot questions like that. Really interesting to see the differences in the in the dynamics. I think we're, we're, we're going to have an exciting election, uh, the by election in Mississauga and then of course 2025 federal election, 2026 provincial election. So taking these early snapshots um, really is going to give us a baseline of, um, of, of where public opinion lies. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for that, uh, Quito. Before we move ahead, uh, there are a few things that we want to discuss. What is why media? What is Main Street uh, research? And what was our methodology? So it's very important for us to highlight uh, this thing. And then we quickly will move on to our questions. And I'll also take the opinions from our guests. Y Media has been in existence for almost uh, two and a half decades now. We started with print, uh, still going quite strong, uh, midweek newspaper. Uh, and uh, you can pick a copy of uh, midweek newspaper right across uh, GTA. It's a free publication. It's in English. Uh, it's published every Tuesday. After a print publication, we also do a 24-7 radio by the name Radio Y. We also have our digital platforms, y.media and southasiandaily.com. And we also run two 24-7 TV channels. One is uh, Channel Y, which is right across Canada on Rogers 857, Bell 828, Tell Us 2418, Ignite 707. And it's broadcasted in Punjabi, Hindi, Urdu, and English. And we have this 24-7 uh, all English channel. This is exclusively in English, Y+. Plus. So this uh, survey has been broadcasted exclusively first on Y+, Plus, and then later on it will be broadcasted on Channel Y. Certainly you can read more details on the website of Main Street as well. And also you, you'll read a lot more details on the front page of Midweek newspaper this week. And uh, Quito, why don't I let you uh, tell about uh, Main Street as well. You, you got a minute or so. Please go ahead, Quito. Yeah, Main Street was founded in 2010, as you mentioned. Uh, I was the founder and, and president and, and remain so. I've uh, been doing this now 14 years, seems hard to believe. and. Um, you know, for this particular survey, we, we favor something called IVR. It stands for Interactive Voice Response. We surveyed almost 1,200 uh, people, 1,183 uh, residents, uh, eligible voters, 18 plus uh, across Caledon, uh, Brampton, and Mississauga. Margin of error about 2.8 percent, plus or minus 2.8 percent on the on, on the uh, top line numbers. Um, and then the margins of error, of course, on the subsamples. Some of the some of you uh, who are going to look at the numbers in Mississauga and Brampton, Caledon, etc. The smaller the subsample, the higher the margin of error. All right. At this point, uh, uh, 
uh, Kimberly, we also have, she's a political commentator. Kimberly, uh, thank you for joining us on this uh, inaugural show. Uh, and uh, I'd like uh, if, if you could tell us something uh, for our viewers' benefit about yourself, as please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've obviously worked in politics all of my life, uh, following in our family's tradition of always being involved. Um, certainly looking at the overall outcomes of, uh, you know, Keto's re recent poll is very interesting to look at from a federal, provincial, and uh, community municipal levels of government. So all three levels of government, which I've, uh, I've worked in on the inside, uh, interworkings, I guess, of, of how the they get elected from a campaign standpoint, and then um, how they work with inside government once they're there. So that would be uh, sort of my background. So very interesting to see the results from Cato's poll. So I'm happy to, to speak tonight about them. Yeah, I couldn't agree more on this one. Uh, it will be very interesting to see what the results are. And uh, I think uh, this is one of the biggest poll surveys ever done in Brampton, Mississauga, and Kellen. Of course, there were surveys done for Brampton uh, if the for, for, at the provincial level sometimes. Sometimes it was done at the federal level. We do have polls uh, for Mississauga by-elections, but I don't think so. Anything in just one poll survey has been done together. But before I move ahead, I'd like to share the methodology all full screen. Uh, so here's a, met a methodology that how did we arrive at uh, this one? So if you have a look at the methodology, uh, the analysis on what we're doing is this report is based on the results of the survey conducted on Saturday, February 3rd to Sunday. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, February 4th, 2024. And the sample size I like to highlight was 1183 adults, 18 years or uh, older in age, all living in the region of Peel. The survey was conducted using automated telephone interviews, smart IVR. So uh, the margin of error I would like to highlight is plus and minus 2.8% at 95% confidence level. And margin of error higher in each subsamples. So total may not add up to 100% due to rounding off. And uh, this poll survey was uh, commissioned exclusively by Y Media Group and Main Street Research. So let's quickly get on to the poll survey. So here we are, we'll start with the first uh, question. And the question is, if the Mississauga mayoral by-election was held today, who do you think you would vote? We all know uh, Bonnie Crombie, she was the mayor of uh, Mississauga. She's now, uh, you know, the Ontario Liberal Party leader. And there are quite a few candidates uh, who would want to become the mayor of Mississauga. So here is the first polling results that we're going to publish. Uh, if elections were held today, what are the voter intentions? So on full screen, I'm going to show you this uh, graphic. Have a look at this graphic. What are the what are the results are saying? So of all voters, 17.5 percent. Uh, that's a big number. They would have supported Carolyn Parrish. So Carolyn Parrish clearly seems to be in lead uh, right away. This is the first poll among a few other polls that we will be uh, publishing, but uh, straight away into the lead. Deepika Damrela. She's at 4.8 uh, percent. Uh, Alvin Techo. He is at 4. Two percent, and we know Peter McCallion. He just announced it uh, that he also plans to run. So, and uh, the name McCallion is a very well recognized name. Hazel McCallion. She she's been there for almost good four decades uh, in Mississauga. So Peter McCallion. He has 7.4 percent uh, support with him. Uh, Stephen Dasko. Uh, he's he's a counselor there in Mississauga. Very actively, uh, you know, announcing his uh, campaign. Uh, the numbers for him are at 8.7 percent. So clearly, we see uh, Carolyn Parrish in the lead straight away, right off the block, 17.5 percent, and uh, with 8.4 percent, we have uh, Stephen Dasko. He's he's a second. If I could, uh, yeah, on the full screen, if if that, I, I could show that for for another 10 seconds or so, and uh, yes, the second is Stephen Dasko, and then we have. Uh, uh, of course, uh, Evelyn Tejo, he's at the third position right now, 7.4 percent. Then almost uh, very similar uh, numbers for the other two members. The poll survey for uh, Mississauga, uh, Meryl, uh, we're talking. And here are the numbers. Uh, Quito, uh, what's, what's your take, take on this uh, one? Quito, I'll start with you. Yeah, I know a lot of uh, your viewers and, and readers are probably looking at this and saying, 
you know, well, 48% undecided is, is, uh, is very, very high, but, you know, this isn't unusual for this early in a, in a municipal election that is going to take place. You know, we now know that it's the election will take place on June 10th. Um, so this is actually not very unusual, very similar. We track the Toronto mayoral election in 2023 in very, very similar pattern. We saw the undecided dropping as we got closer and closer to election day. So uh, certainly a good start for uh, for Carolyn Parrish. I, I see that uh, you're, you're, you're posting the numbers uh, broken up by the ridings in, in Mississauga. So it's really interesting um, to see that. Uh, here we see, um, actually that number is incorrect. Stephen Dasko is not at 32.8 in, in Mississauga Malton. It's, it's the reverse. Uh, Carolyn Parrish, which that's her home uh, area, is Malton, uh, is at 32.8. And Malt, uh, Dipika Damerla d does very well in her uh, uh, home home riding. Um, the, if, if you look at those uh, regional numbers, um, it actually makes a lot of sense where the bulk of the strength is for each of these candidates. Um, Peter McCallion, for example, does best in Center and in uh, Cooksville. Um, Carolyn Parrish does best in Malton, uh, Stephen Dasko in, in his own area, um, and same for Damerla. So al although the top line numbers, um, remember that this is all voters. So if we were to do a decided and leaning on this, more or less, we, you know, we would see Carolyn Parrish in the high 30s um, and, and Stephen Dasko in second in the mid-teens, um, maybe as high as 20%. Uh, we didn't run the decided and leaning because at this point with 48% undecided, it's it's too early to do that. Hopefully we'll get a chance to do this a few more times between now and uh, and June. But at least for now, it looks um, look pretty wide open race for second place here. All right. And uh, our, uh, your, your take on, on this one, uh, Kimberly, are you surprised by these results? Uh, you're, you're quite active in this area. What's your take on these results? Yeah, I mean, like Keto, I think, you know, the undecided is stands to reason right now that it would be about 50% of the vote. Um, you know, not entirely sure how they're going to vote yet. You know, let's let's be clear that they haven't even opened the, um, the um, I guess the, the election, um, they haven't opened it yet. It doesn't actually open until March the 6th. So although these are the candidates that have expressed interest until they file their papers, we don't actually know who is going to be running and is there anybody else running? Um, those, are, those are questions we won't know. And they have until April 26th to actually file papers. So again, you know, I think we're not gonna see that undecided change very much until at least the end of April when people are gonna start to pay more attention. Okay, now we know who's running. Now we know where they're running, um, and now we have until you know June the uh, June the tenth to make up our minds. So I would anticipate, you know, looking at these polls now that uh, you know Main Street's done an excellent job of defining certainly how each one of them are strong in their own ridings and where they're currently sitting as councillors and where they're currently known. And then as you know, things progress, we'll see where these numbers lead when you know, the city is, is opened up to them and they've put their papers in and they're actively campaigning. So you know, I'd be interested to see what that, what that looks like when you know, we're halfway through April, you know, beginning of May, as we start to see people make up their minds and, and understand that there is an election. The other thing I would say about um, Mississauga is they traditionally have a very low voter turnout. So, you know, uh, Keto's done a great job here getting the numbers for us and getting us a good snapshot early. Um, and given that it's a by-election as well, not a general election, um, it's going to take a lot of attention to get a lot of voters out on this on this by-election. Yeah, uh, uh, you're right. I mean, it's, it's very early in the race. And uh, as we move further, things could change a lot. And yeah, I couldn't agree more when you said that, yes, uh, uh, I must appreciate uh, Quito and his entire team at Main Street. Uh, I've always, um, you know, followed them. They've done an amazing job. I must uh, uh, compliment them and thank them, their entire team. They work very, very hard. And as we all know, one of the leading firms as far as uh, public research, market opinion is concerned, their accuracy as far as election results, we all know. And Main Street has really 
made a big name. So thank you so much, Kuto, for that. And uh, Kimberly, thank you so much uh, for the analysis on Mississauga. Kuto, before we move on to our uh, provincial and uh, federal uh, questions, it's going to be very interesting because we're going to talk riding by riding. But anything else you could yeah. want to add as far as these uh, results of Mississauga mayoral elections. But uh, i like to tell you that we will be doing a lot many poll surveys as we uh, head towards the Mississauga mayoral elections. Quito. Yeah, I guess not unusual to see some of the, you know, some of the cross tabs here when we look at, uh, there's no, not really a difference between the way men and women are voting, but older voters are, are, um, uh, are supporting Carolyn Parrish in, in bigger numbers. Obviously in certain regions, she's at a low of 10%. In, in one of the ridings and a high in her own area of uh, almost 40%. Um, so it's interesting, you know, this is a very, um, you know, turnout as, as Kimberly pointed out, older voters in, in the Toronto by-election, for example, it was estimated that close to 70% of voters um, were over the age of 65 in that by-election. So really turnout is going to benefit anyone who has that support among older voters. Um, they historically outperform in, in every election, but more so in by-elections and more so in municipal elections. So um, gonna be interesting to see if that pattern holds. All right, and uh, I think now it's time to move towards our second poll, which is gonna be very, very inter interesting. Uh, how do we see the voter intentions as far as uh, the province is concerned? But before I get onto the numbers, I want to, uh, you know, ask both our panel members what were they expecting? Because uh, yes, we have the results with us now. We are going to display all the results. But before we get get into that, I would ask uh, Kimberly, why don't I start with you this time? Uh, we are talking about. What is the voter intention as far as Brampton, Mississauga, and Caledon is concerned at a provincial level? The PCs, they have formed a second conservative majority. The Liberal Party, they have a new leader uh, with Pony Crombie. We've already seen both of them. I interviewed both of them, and I saw uh, Pony Crombie right from the start when I interviewed her. She had certain things to say about uh, Doug Ford, and Doug Ford, he didn't mince his words for Bonnie either. So we're already seeing big clashes here, but how does it turn out at the grassroots? How does it turn out at the polls? That's what matters. We will be talking what's happening in Brampton. We have a few cabinet ministers also in Brampton, in Mississauga. So what is in store will definitely tell you if provincial elections were held today, what are the voting intentions in Mississauga, Brampton and Caledon? We'll talk about that. But Kimberly, anything that you want to add before we start putting out the numbers out? I, I mean, I think, again, it's a little bit early days. We've got a couple of years left in this term. And, you know, I will remind people that I think Bonnie Crombie is going to have a, a tough uh, row ahead for her as the Liberal Party right now currently does not have provincial party status. So that changes how uh, they can spend money, how they, they raise money. Um, it's going to be a tough it's going to be a tough fight for her to get that back uh, on track. I think, you know, it's, it's Mississauga has always been sort of a traditional um, liberal swing kind of riding where I think you will see a liberal stronghold there. Certainly she's well known in, in the Mississauga area, very popular. So I think you're going to, I think the poll will show that, that, you know, if the election were to be held today, Bonnie would have a good stronghold in, in the Mississauga area. And, you know, Brampton, the same, the same thing, but opposite, you know, Brampton's going to hold uh, sort of their conservative ridings there. Uh, like they have in the past. Those would those would be my take. And then Caledon, I mean, Caledon's really kind of a split riding, right? It's Caledon Dufferin. So, and I, my prediction there would be that, you know, Caledon would, Caledon would hold as well um, at this point as a, as a conservative stronghold. So, you know, again, early days, it'll be interesting to see what the platforms are that they come out with. And, and I think Bonnie's going to have a, have a big struggle um, given that they don't even have official party status right now. So it's a tough one. Uh, party, they have a lot of uh, ground to cover, uh, a lot of fundraising needs to be done as much as Pony uh, is claiming that they're, they're getting the numbers there. They have to build a party. There's so much to be done. It's, it's not going to be an easy task for, uh, you know, liberals, uh, especially Bonnie Crombie from third position. How do they get to form the government? They've been almost out. Uh, they've been decimated to single digits in almost the last two elections. So how do they get back 
uh, and move past NDP. NDP has been enjoying this position of the official opposition in Ontario from the last two elections. Yeah. Uh, Quito, before we start uh, with the numbers, uh, what, what do you anticipate? What's your overall analysis in Ontario? In, and then we'll talk about the region of field. Yeah, I think as, as Kim pointed out, it's early days. Um, you know, we had done a poll the, the day after uh, Bonnie Crombie was elected as uh, the new leader of the Ontario Liberal Party. Um, we released, uh, well, we started fielding and then within a couple of days uh, released an Ontario wide poll showing that, that, that she had closed the gap on, on Doug Ford. Um, you know, not surprising given the profile of the of the leadership race. We've just come out of six months of 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 coverage uh, of that leadership race that that she eventually won on December second. Um, you know, but I, I really I wasn't n nothing here really surprised me. Um, a couple of the writings, you know, with smaller sample sizes, you could argue, okay, there's this party's too low or this party's too high. Uh, overall, I had expected, you know, uh, the Ontario Liberals with with Bonnie's name to win uh, Mississauga looks like potential sweep. Um, but, you know, a reminder that usually Mississauga all goes one way or the other. All the seats um, go one way or the other. So uh, liberal or uh, conservative, I, I don't believe the NDP has won one there provincially, at least not since maybe 1990. Um, and and then as far as Brampton, you know, kind of a mixed bag, a couple comp competitive seats uh, for the Ontario Liberals, not not really anything surprising there. A handful where the NDP, where it's a three three way race, um, Brampton will be much more competitive. And then of course Caledon, you know, conservative stronghold and and part of the Dufferin Caledon um, riding. So it didn't really uh, surprise me any of these results. All right, and now we get on to the results here. Let's get on with the uh, with the uh, results here, and we'll start with the uh, Mississauga. So let's see, let's show on full screen what do we have here uh, as far as the results is concerned. So here, here are the uh, results. Yeah, if we can show this on the big screen, uh, this is right uh, across uh, Peel region. If we can show, yeah, the previous one was fine. We can uh, show show the previous uh, graphic. Yeah. So there we have the results here. So PC party in the region of Peel, they are lagging behind as much as we could say that uh, they're ahead, but PC party, uh, Doug Ford's PC party is, uh, has a support of 29.9%. It's almost 30%, which is 29.9%. So, and then we have uh, liberals, Bonnie Crombie's liberals in Ontario, they are 35%. So in the region of Peel, Liberal Party is definitely leading in the region of Peel. And then uh, NDP, they are slipped to 10.5%. They're the official opposition in Ontario. Marriage Styles was here at our Channel Y studios. I spoke with her uh, on a host of different issues. But in the region of Peel, they seem to be lagging far behind. The Green Party, 3.2% in the region of Peel. And others, 2.2%. This is all voters. And we'll, we still have undecided voters at 19%. Uh, and Quito, I'll start with you. What do you have to say about these numbers, Quito? Yeah, peel peel wide. Uh, you know, the, these are very good numbers for the Ontario Liberal Party. Um, obviously, you know, what, when you look at some of the cross tabs, you understand that you know the Crombie brand and is very, very popular in Mississauga. The lead there is much more substantial. Um, you know, remember again, with the undecided 19%, we didn't, we didn't uh, uh, do decided and leaning, but this turns into about 40% for Crombie uh, across Peel. That's a very good number. Like I said, sweeping what I had expected really is sweeping uh, Mississauga and then competitive in a handful of seats in in Brampton and a few others that are close you know close races so provincially at least um, it looks like Bonnie Crombie certainly has an impact on the vote intents we knew this um, just it's it's her hometown advantage so um, you know the advantage in in Brampton is not it, it's basically a tie in Brampton 
And so, but at least that puts the Liberals into competition, uh, unlike the last two provincial elections where really, as you said, they've been decimated and wiped out largely in, in um, across the 905. So um, certainly mission accomplished uh, so far. Okay. And Kimberly, are you, uh, do you have, a, uh, are you surprised uh, Conservatives lead as far as Ontario is concerned, but here in uh, the region of the Peel, it's, uh, it, this is a bony effect, you think, or the Liberals, you think, were already ahead in the region of Peel? What do you say? I, I mean, I think Kino makes a good point. You know, we just came off a leadership race where Carolyn, where um, uh, Bonnie was, you know, all over the media and very recognizable. But it is her home turf. Uh, Mississauga, I would expect her to lead in Mississauga, certainly. Um, I think that's going to be a tough that's going to be a tough city. All of those ridings going to be a tough city for um, the PC government to do well in and um, in the upcoming election. And it'll be interesting to see with, you know, the as time goes on and the Liberals are doing, you know, they're campaigning and they're getting out there to see whether or not that number moves um, at all in the Peel region, given the popularity of her um, just coming off the leadership race. So, you know, I think Keto makes a good point around the timing. And it, again, it'll be interesting to see what happens and whether that moves. And, you know, with the margin of error as well, you know, part of me wonders if those races aren't pretty close um, between those two. All right. So once again, these numbers are here for you on full screen before we uh, start uh, getting into the discussion as far as writing wise is concerned. So have a look at these numbers. Once again, these are the numbers for the region of Peel. Once again, we like to remind you uh, there are still 19.1 percent voters undecided. So out of all the voters, we have 29.9 uh, as far as the region of Peel is concerned for uh, the Premier Force Party, Conservative Party, then Bonnie Crombie's Liberals at 35, NDP at 10.5 in the region of Peel, 3.2% for the Greens and others 2.2%. I still uh, remember when uh, Premier Ford was here uh, last time as well, and he, me he mentioned that it's going to be 5-0 in Brampton. So, uh, and once again, we, we saw this, Brampton did turn uh, blue in these uh, last elections. It was uh, because I asked Premier Ford when he came here after winning his first uh, term and when he came to our studio, I said everywhere it's blue and most of Ontario, but uh, you're losing in Brampton. Brampton, three seats for NDP. It was two in 2018 for the PCs. I said you're in minority in Brampton. So Premier Ford here in our studio, he said it's going to be 5-0 next time I'm telling you. And yes, it was 5-0, all clean sweep. Uh, for for the PCs, but that was 2018, that was 2022, but here we are, it's 2024 now, and uh, we get to get uh, the details as far as the writing wise is concerned, but we clearly see the numbers, if I may show that once again on full screen, we clearly see that the PC party is, is trailing here. Uh, Quido, if I may ask you, do you think the green belt uh, ha has anything to do with this thing, because the green belt a scandal. I mean, there it did definitely hit them because uh, the cabinet ministers they had to be moved out, shuffled out, and one of the cabinet ministers ha also had to leave the caucus. So the green belt issue. There are a host of other issues. So five zero, a massive victory, massive victory in 2022. But here we are, a few months later, uh, the PCs are behind once again, back. So. Green belt or anything else? What do you say? The reason? Look, I think the green belt, you know, we pulled the green belt issue very significantly. And for the first time since Doug Ford became the leader of the PCs and the first time since he was elected premier, it's it's the first issue that is broken through partisan lines. And, and it, all the other things that, that that Ford has been criticized for since being elected premier, it, it doesn't touch his base. And so what I think happened with the Greenbelt scandal uh, and is still happening um, and, and will continue to happen for some time, I think, is that, it, it, you know, even PC voters didn't like the revelations and, and continue not to like. It's sort of this very... Um, and, and it's the first issue that has really touched this base in that way. So 
that was the danger of the green belt. And, and, you know, as we move forward, if more and more uh, comes out of this RCMP investigation and other things, I, I think it will continue to hurt his, his personal brand is, is, you know, well above that of the party. Um, and, and that's why this, uh, this particular scandal has been so damaging. Um, other than that, I'd say every political party has a shelf life. Every political candidate has a shelf life. And, you know, after six years in, in government and, um, you know, all, all governments start getting uh, fatigue as um, voter fatigue. And, and so some of that could be a play here already. Just six years in, we, we know that Justin Trudeau, after 2015, looked like he might be prime minister for, for more than a decade easily. And, uh, and here we are nine years later and, and we know his current state of popularity. Okay, and uh, uh, Kimberly, before we get on to the writing wise, your final thoughts. Do you think, uh, because it's, it's uh, the elections, because it's a majority government, the elections are not that close. It's still almost uh, two years, 2026. That's the time we'll see another elections, most likely in May 2026. Uh, but I think, will the Green Belt scandal go away by that time? What do you think about, uh, high, they're talking about Highway 413. That's what they're trying to uh, put across now. So your final words, as far as the overall numbers is concerned, then we'll get into the uh, writing wise analysis. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the green ballot issue is going to, it's going to stick for quite a long time. And I do expect that we will see that issue come up as a, as a campaign issue pretty strongly when we get to the 2026 election. I don't think he's going to be able to lose that. Um, I think he will be forced to answer that. And, you know, I tend to agree with Keto, I think, it's the first time that the the party themselves have struggled with, you know, where that where that lands internally, and there is some divisiveness because of it. Um, and I I do believe that in 2026 he will he will have to address that. I don't I don't believe it's going to go away. And you know the the new highway the 413 I think you know that was heavily pulled. It was heavily looked at. Um, there was a lot of consultation around that one. You know, I think Ontario does need to build more infrastructure, and if that's new roads, new subway systems, or whatever they are, um, we have to do it in a conscientious, environmentally friendly way. And uh, we need to get people moving better and faster. You know, I'd obviously like to see some green energy involved in that. Um, but, you know, I think Ontario does need to, to move uh, through in a, in a much more efficient way. I mean, any of us that have ever been stuck on the 401 understand that we need more places for people to to go um, so that we're not all sitting there in our cars with, you know, greenhouse gas emissions. So, I, you know, as we move towards electric, as we move, um, you know, with more green energy, I think there's going to be some positives coming out of that. And I do think it will come up uh, in the election. It'll be interesting to see uh, how they how they handle that. All right, thank you so much. And here we get into the uh, details. Riding wise, we'll start with Brampton. We'll start with Brampton Centre. Let's quickly move on to Brampton Centre. Uh, the incumbent is Charlene Williams. She is also the cabinet minister. She's started as a councillor. She is so she definitely started from the municipal elections. So she left her, her municipal seat to run for the Conservatives, and she did win. She went on to become the cabinet minister. So Charlene Williams, if you look at the numbers, so Brampton Centre. So when we uh, ask this simple question, if a provincial election were held today, which party or candidate would you vote for? In Brampton Centre, Charlene Williams, 26%. The Liberals are ahead here, 34.3%. NDP, 22.4%. In third position, the Green, barely they could make it to 1%, 0.9%, and others almost negligible. So, so out of all these voters, 17.4% are still undecided. But if the election was held today, the Liberals could win a seat in Brampton Centre. This has been mostly a swing riding, if I would say, federally, provincially. But here it is, the incumbent cabinet minister, Charlene Williams. In today's Y Media Main Street poll survey, she is trailing behind despite being a cabinet minister. And almost by good eight percentage points, she is trailing behind. Quito, your take on Brampton Centre. 
Yeah, I think it's important to point out, Vera, that uh, you know the margin of error here at the at the riding level is is substantially higher. This is based on uh, roughly a hundred samples, and so um, you know it, this is a very this is a substantial shift from where we were in 2022, uh, when uh, when Ms. Williams won with I believe well over 40 percent. The Liberals were in third in this riding. Um, but pretty close between the Liberals and, and the NDP. So it seems like things have certainly shifted. Um, but again, just a caution on, on, you know, on the sample size here that, uh, that the margin of error is, is in excess of 6%. Uh, so the, the, an eight point lead with a margin of error of six plus it is, is not as substantial as it may appear on, on the surface. Okay, Kimberly for Brampton Center, your quick take. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Charmaine Williams has really uh, worked hard with her community. I know she's been out in the community quite a bit. She's a she's a first time um, she's a first time PC uh, MPP and a first time cabinet minister. So I think she's got a lot of work uh, ahead of her still, and I think you'll probably see those numbers shift back into into her favor. She's she's quite popular in her own riding and you know to to keto's point you know we have to be careful around the margin of error here and what the, what it really looks like all right and now we'll quickly move on to brampton south uh charmaine williams uh, charmaine williams is a cabinet minister but charmaine williams uh she's trailing behind but another cabinet minister brampton south let's see what's the position as far as brampton south is uh, concerned we have the minister of transport uh he's been a cabinet uh, minister Prabhmeet Singh Sarkaria. So Prabhmeet Sarkaria, he uh, is almost neck to neck. Brampton South, 26.5%. If the elections were held today, these are the voter intentions. 26.5% for Prabhmeet Singh Sarkaria in Brampton South. Liberals, 26.5%. And then you have NDP at 3.6%. The Green Party, that's very interesting. The Green Party is at 8.1%. So Green Party seems to be doing even better than the NDP. They're, I think they're pretty much out of the margin of error here. But neck to neck, as far as the Liberals and the PC Party is concerned, Brampton South. So uh, uh, Prabhmi Sarkaria has been very active in the community. Prabhmi Sarkaria has been a regular uh, cabinet face as far as uh, the Doug Ford government is concerned in first term 2018 as well, in the second term 2022 as well. So a regular face, Prabhmi Singh Sarkaria is almost neck to neck. So it's almost, uh, you know, anybody's take uh, because the numbers are almost even 26.5 for PC, 26.5 for the Liberals. Quito, your take. Yeah, same goes on the caution here, remembering that with a margin of error on the sample size, this, this could be a substantial lead for either either candidate. I I, 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 I know uh, Mr. Sakaria's uh, work very well. I, we've met um, certainly very popular gentleman in, in his community and, and in Brampton and, and uh, well-known cabinet minister. You know, the, the other caution here is remember that when we're asking this question as a generic uh, ballot, we're not including Prabhmeet's name in that uh, in, in that ballot. And I suspect that if we did a writing specific poll and asked about uh, the candidates here against random liberal candidate X, uh, same goes for the NDP. Um, without knowing those candidate names, th these numbers, you know, we know that there are candidate effects certainly with high profile star candidates like Mr. Sakaria that, that that he would probably perform better than than this generic ballot that we've asked. So um, yeah, but it's interesting because he won with 45% and uh, uh, you know, it, it certainly looks like it could be more competitive. Okay, and uh, Kimberly, your take on this one, two cabinet ministers that we've discussed up until now and uh, Kim, uh, we've seen Charmaine Williams clearly in trouble. She's trailing behind with the survey. And uh, the second cabinet minister, Brampton South, he's almost neck to neck out of similar percentage. Your take? Yeah, I mean, I think um, 
probably me if if we had done the poll with those names in place certainly that that would probably have voted uh, a little bit better for him the other thing that i would keep in mind here too is there's a high uh, margin of undecided voters on this one you know it's you know one third of the people that responded were undecided so that you know also leans towards you know is he really that far behind I'm not, I'm not sure that he is. Um, and again, I think he does a great job working in his community. He's certainly front and center. And, you know, the, the leader, when we go to voting and we go to the polls, the leader has a large impact on what happens down at your community level. So, you know, are we actually seeing the reflection of uh, maybe what's going on with uh, the overall party status, or are we seeing what's going on with each individual candidate? So, you know, that'll, that'll have to play out. And, um, and as we see that undecided in, uh, in that riding, and then when we add names in, I think, you know, both these cabinet ministers are going to, are, you're going to see their numbers go up and I think they're both going to be fine. They're, um, they're really engaged in their communities. People certainly know their name and they're very high profile. So I think you will see that each of those each of those cabinet ministers go up. Yeah, this is a bit of a surprise for me as well, because as you uh, mentioned, uh, Prabhmeet uh, Sarkaria, he's been very active in the community. Uh, he, he won the election in 2018, despite three seats going to NDP in 2018. But Prabhmeet Sarkaria won from Brampton South. He stayed on. I went on to become the cabinet minister uh, 2022, again a cabinet minister, won his seat comfortably. But here we are for promising Sarkaria, it's neck to neck in Brampton South. Quite, quite, quite an interesting thing. Uh, this, is, this is quite surprising. Let's quickly move on to Brampton East now. Brampton East, uh, this was a riding which was held by Gururatan Singh, the deputy uh, leader for NDP. And uh, now let's look at the numbers. So if, if I show you the numbers on full screen, uh, here, here we see Brampton East, PC party. They have 25.8%. So the incumbent, uh, Hardeep Garewal, he's leading in this riding with 25.8%. It's not a big lead, but still he's leading. The Liberals are at 23.1% here. And NDP, on, on the back of the heel, heels of Liberals, it's at 23.4%. The interesting part is, NDP is very strong in this riding. It has been very strong in this riding. This is the riding from where Jagmeet Singh won. It was earlier Bramley, Gore, Malton, then it became Brampton East. So Jagmeet Singh's riding, it's, it's called Jagmeet Singh's backyard. Then Jagmeet Singh's brother, Gurratan Singh, he held on to this riding, Brampton East. But last elections, 2022, the PCs took over. It was a big, huge blue wave and Hardeep Garewal. He lost earlier in the same riding, Hardeep Garewal, but then he went on to win from Brampton East, Hardeep Garewal. But here we are, not a big lead, but still Hardeep Garewal uh, is leading 25.8% if the provincial elections were held today. So 25.8% for PCs, Hardeep Garewal, and then you have uh, Liberals 23.1, and NDP at second position, though it's uh, not a big lead, 23.4, and Green 1.8%, other 0.4 percent. Quito, your quick take. Yeah, I'd say you know this. Uh, this is an interesting writing, as you say. It's been held by. Uh, well, this writing has changed distribution, but this writing and its predecessor writings have been held by provincially and federally by all all three parties uh, uh, in in recent history. So, seeing a three way, you know, essentially there's a three way tie. It's they're all well, well within the margin of error. Remember. This is also the, the smallest sample size that we got in any of the writings. Um, so I would say not not terribly surprising that all all three major parties are are competitive and and could have um, th this is certainly one to watch in in the next election, but it's still three years away. So um, I, I just think and, and it had the second highest undecided rate as well. So I, I would put this one in the coin toss category. Okay, and quickly, uh, Kimberly, your take on, on this writing. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, Keto took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say this is, uh, this is going to be one to watch. I don't, I don't think there's going to be a, a clear winner here. Um, and I think this is one of those ridings that's really going to depend on how well the party overall is going to perform. So, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it, it is a coin toss, this one. Okay, and uh, let's quickly move on to Brampton North. Brampton North, uh, this has been a very 
Uh, interesting riding. Let's uh, have a look at the numbers for Brampton North, first of all. Uh, so on, on this riding as well, as we clearly see, uh, the PCs are still holding on to the lead in this riding as well. So it's 31.7% uh, for the PC party. Uh, the incumbent uh, Graham McGregor, he's been a very active member in the community. He has uh, won the riding uh, recently and the Liberal Party, they are trailing 28.6, but the lead isn't that much. It still can be covered. NDP far behind. Mind you, this is another riding which NDP used to be very, very strong in this riding, Brampton North. This was definitely considered as a strong NDP riding. NDP won in 2018. This riding NDP won in 2018, but this time uh, they lost in 2022 and now they're trailing far behind. So the Jagmeet Singh effect, we used to call Brampton East and Brampton North the backyard of Jagmeet Singh. But I think they're losing their effect here in these uh, ridings. So Brampton North clearly NDP trailing far behind. It's, it's mainly between the Liberals and the PCs. Back to the race between Liberals and the PCs. So 31.7% for PC, Graham McCrory and 286 for Liberal. The Green Party, 3.3%, others 1.3%. We still have a lot of undecided voters. There are 23.4%. So a lot of votes up for grabs. Uh, Quito, your take. Yeah, I would say, you know, we're, we're seeing, uh, um, you know, as, as you mentioned, that this is, you know, a little bit surprising. The NDP, um, has historically done well here with with, um, with Jagmeet Singh federally with his brother uh, Gurutan um, winning this seat in in 2018 and then losing it. Um, I think you know. Um, uh, sorry, next door in, in Brampton East. I mean, but the NDP in the last election. This is one of the few ridings where they came in third. Um, so it's not that surprising. And I guess seeing that, you know, this is more the failing of merit styles, I guess, um, would be my uh, point to make that um, uh, per perhaps the NDP selecting a, a candidate that isn't um, as well known and, and, and connected in Peel is, is going to be a big challenge when you have, you know, Bonnie Crombie as the liberal leader and, and you have Doug Ford, who's also a bit quite popular in Peel um, as he is in Toronto. So that, that could be the story of the next election, I think. Okay. And uh, Kimberly, a quick one from you. Yeah. And I mean, I think um, this is very similar to, to Brampton East. I think it's going to be one of those ones that we're going to have to watch. Um, you know, I think the PCs uh, stand a good chance at holding on to it. Uh, it looks like to me that what might, might happen here is the Liberal and the NDP might battle it out, splitting the vote a little bit, and then, um, you know, letting the PCs come back through. But again, with, you know, with East, Brampton East and Brampton North, it'll be, those will be the two to watch for sure. Okay. And let's quickly move on to Brampton West now. Amar Jot Sandhu, he's consecutively one from... Uh, this riding as well in 2018, uh, he won that in 2022, he won. He's been very actively participating in the community. So he is again in the lead. 36% for Amar Jodh Sandhu, 33.8 for the li Liberals and NDP, a clear collapse of NDP here, 6.4% in uh, Brampton West, Greens 1.4%. Uh, there's not much room for Green or anybody else. Actually, for that matter, NDP also. I still remember in 2018, uh, the NDP candidate worked very, very hard in this riding as well. So NDP, Brampton North, Brampton West, these are the two areas that we're seeing. NDP has started falling behind in Brampton North and Brampton West. Brampton East is the only riding that I see NDP still holding on to. Uh, but other than that, I think NDP, other than Brampton East, NDP uh, is, is not really doing well. It's mainly between Liberals and the PCs. That's what's happening in, in Brampton. So Amar Jyot Sandhu, holding on to the lead here in Brampton West, but a very narrow lead here. Quito? Mic is off, I guess. Quito, your mic is off. Quito, did you mute it? Uh, my apologies. I, I might have been muted there. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, please go I, I think if you're... If you're Merritt Styles or, or an NDP uh, supporter and you're looking 
at all these numbers, but this one is is really the uh, I would say a head shaker a catastrophe. Remember that this writing, uh, the NDP lost in the 2018 election by like a point, point and a half, something like that, and then um, uh, dropped to third place in the last election, and now uh, basically is a two way race between the Liberals and the and the PCs. I. I um, these are concerning numbers. If you're in, um, if you're in Merritt Stiles' office uh, today, looking at these, and um, they got a lot of work to do because th th this is a gigantic collapse from where they were just two elections ago. Oh yeah, I'm, I I couldn't agree. Uh, it'll be these numbers are very concerning for NDP. If you were in Merritt Stiles' office, uh, a, a quick thirty second uh, for, for you, uh, Kimberly, and then we'll move on to Caledon and Mississauga. Yeah, Kimberly, can you hear me? Yeah, we'll quickly move on to Caledon now. I think we're losing Kimberly here. So here are the uh, numbers for Caledon. So Caledon, we have Sylvia Jones. We all know uh, she's the cabinet uh, minister there. She's an incumbent from there. Uh, and she's got a good lead there in Caledon. So if you look at the Caledon numbers, the PCs are doing well there. The PC party has 34.8% support there in Caledon. The Liberals have 258 uh, NDP not doing bad as compared to Bremden ridings, I would say. 12.4%, the Green at 6.6%. There are not many undecided voters here. Precisely that's the reason NDP and Green, they've also done reasonably well. But PC is still strong with Sylvia Jones at 34.8%. Quito. Yeah, I'd say, you know, first of all, um, I just want to point out for your for your viewers and, and people who are going to read this poll, um, remember that this was a Peel region poll. So when we pulled these numbers, um, this is not the full riding of Dufferin Kaladin. So I, I want to make sure that, that that's um, clear, that this is just the Kaladin part, the vote intent um, in the Kaladin section of the Dufferin Kaladin riding. So I would expect that if we were to add the Dufferin part into these uh, poll numbers, that this would be a much more substantial uh, margin for the PCs and, and the incumbent Sylvia Jones. Um, it, it, it's just the the nature of this riding. This is not a swing riding. We would not expect, um, I can't remember the last election this that this particular riding was uh, competitive, either federal or provincial. So. All right, I think it's time to get on to the Mississauga ridings. We will show you one by one on your full screen all the six Mississauga ridings. So we've shown you the numbers for Brampton. Uh, Brampton, I think the Liberals are bouncing back. It's going to be not an easy task, though we still have some time for the provincial elections. It's almost a good two years, a little over two years actually, May 2026, that's the time we're looking at. So the Liberals, they have worked to do if at all they want to win ridings here but it's not going to be easy for PCs either the provincial uh, conservative party they have to work hard if they want to maintain their leads but this is a very interesting time uh, quickly moving on to Mississauga now Mississauga the first one that we're seeing is Mississauga East Cookswell and Mississauga East Cookswell we have uh, Khalid Rashid we all know he, uh, he has been uh, with, with the conservatives, but because of an issue, we all know uh, now he's, he's out of the caucus. He was the cabinet minister there as well. So, but uh, uh, you, you clearly see him trailing, even if they were to vote PC, you clearly see him trailing at 33%. The liberals are strong in Mississauga East Cooksville. They're 42.7%. Then 4.7% for NDP. They've almost collapsed here. It's 1.8% for the green. The Liberals, is this the Bonnie Crombie effect now? Is this the Bonnie Crombie effect now? That's what we're seeing here. The Liberal Party, 42.7%. Uh, this guy, Khalid Rashid, was the cabinet minister, was with PC, but he's been moved out. So let's see the other writings before I get to the quiddo. Let's uh, quickly look on to the other writings, uh, you know. And th this is Mississauga Center. Mississauga Center, again, Oh my God, you look at that Liberal Party, 39.3%, very strong uh, Mississauga Center. And the incumbent, Natalia Kunstova, Natalia clearly trailing far behind at 23.2%. NDP even further behind, 10.6%. 
green at 3.7 percent and others 1.6 percent. So if the elections were to held to be held today, I think 39.3 percent for liberals. This riding will definitely Mississauga Center would definitely go. Uh, with the margin or of error to liberal, I definitely think so. Let's quickly move on to the next writing. Here's another very uh, important person, Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Uh, very active in the community, Sharif Sawabi, uh, but trailing behind. The Liberal Party once again here at 39.9 in Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Sharif Sawabi, 30.2%, and NDP almost in sing lower single digit, 2.7%. Green 1.5 percent, so Mississauga Aaron Mills would clearly go to uh, the Liberals today if the elections were to be held today. Was, is this a Bonnie Crombie effect or the Liberals are bouncing back? We'll definitely ask our experts later on. Quickly moving on to the next riding here. Let's see what Mississauga Lakeshore has to offer. Mississauga Lakeshore. Okay, this is quite interesting. Uh, the incumbent PC party, a member of provincial parliament, Rudy Cazetto. Rudy Cazetto is at 33.1%, but the Liberals are ahead here, 34.5%, though the lead isn't that big here, but definitely the Liberals are ahead at 34.5%. NDP, 10.8%. The Green Party, 2.1%. So this seat would have gone to the Liberals once again. So Liberals are back here as far as this seat is concerned. Let's quickly go on to our next riding now. Mississauga Malton, Mississauga Malton, Deepak Anand. Deepak Anand is trailing behind here at 30.5%. The Liberals very, very strong here. Oh, wow. 44.3%. That's a huge, huge lead, almost a 14% lead. A 14% lead in this riding in Mississauga Malton. The Liberal Party has 44.3%. Deepak Anand trailing far behind at 30.5%. NDP. 7.7% in single digits. The Green Party is also in single digit, 1.4%. So if the election were held today, Deepak Anand was, would lose his seat. Sharif Sabave could lose his seat. Natalia could lose his seat. And Khaled Rashid could lose his seat. Up until now in the five ridings, there's only one riding, Rudy Cazetto, which would stand a chance, but liberals are leading there as well. Five ridings, liberals are leading all five ridings that we've discussed up until now. The sixth riding, let's go to Nina Tangri. She's again a cabinet minister. Nina Tangri, she's been a very strong candidate here. She's now the cabinet minister, 27.5%, 45.1%. I think the liberals are, could make almost a clean sweep. It could be 5-1 or 6-0, 5-1 or 6-0. The Liberal Party is 41.5% in this riding, Mississauga Streets will. Nina Tangri is far behind with 27.5% and 11.1% for the NDP, 5.5% for Green. So it could be 6-0. That's the big news that we are going to, uh, I think this could, this would be the headline here. That, that is the headline here. I think if I look at the numbers here, this will be the headline at Y Media Main Street poll. In, if the elections were held today, Mrs. Saga could go red. Definitely Mrs. Saga could be 6-0 or 5-1 if the elections were held today. And in Brampton, the PCs are barely surviving. The Liberals are really coming back strong. The NDP, other than the Brampton East, I don't see them performing very well. So it's between Liberals and PCs in almost all the ridings. So we're talking 12 ridings here, one with Caledon, five for Brampton, six for Mississauga. So out of the 12, I would say just one riding, we can say NDP is there, but all 11 other ridings, it's a toss between Liberals versus uh, PC. But out of Liberals and PC, let me ask Quito. Quito very strong performance in 12 ridings for Liberals or PC. If you had to pick one and looking at the Mississauga ridings, I want you to take your analysis, Quito. Yeah, it, uh, you know, if we look at the 2022 uh, results, there were still, you know, Mississauga was still one of the places where the Liber we saw Liberals still very competitive. Um, Dipika Damrila, who's now uh, uh, only lost by 3%. Uh, Liz Mendez in, in Lakeshore lost by a couple of points. Um, there was still hopes uh, in 2022 that the Liberals would pick back up some of these ridings that they've held. They're all held uh, federally by the Liberals. So certainly uh, these numbers are not that surprising given that it's Bonnie Crombie's home turf. Um, I, I would be hard pressed not to 
to say that this is going to be a sweep for for the Liberals. It, it's a little bit closer in 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 Mississauga Lakeshore. Not surprising. It's uh, the demographics in in Lakeshore are a little bit different um, than most of the rest of Mississauga. But like I said, Mississauga always swings. Uh, one way or the other, um, unanimously for parties. So th this isn't surprising to me. All right. Kimberly, your quick take on Mississauga. He's off. Uh, if you can unmute yourself, Kimberly. Kimberly, we can't hear you. Uh, can you can you unmute yourself, Kimberly? Can you hear me? Yeah, I think your mic is off. We're, we're having troubles with your audio. I think we're having troubles with your audio. We're going to get back to you once again. But uh, at this point, we have to quickly move on to our uh, federal writings. But uh, here's here's a quick synopsis. Here's a quick synopsis of the provincial results. Why media Main Street? Poll. Why Media Main Street Poll, a quick synopsis of all the ridings, 12 ridings. NDP, I'll start with NDP because NDP, they're just active in Brampton East. But other than that, whether it's Caledon or other four ridings in Brampton or in Mississauga, NDP, it certainly is, would be a concern for marriage styles, for NDP leadership. They're not doing that well other than Brampton East. So in other 11 ridings, it's a very strong contest between the Liberals and the PCs. I'll give it to Liberals because they're very strong in almost five to six ridings. They could have won five ridings, they could lose maybe just one, but very strong comeback by the Liberal Party in Mississauga, whether this is a Bonnie Crombie effect, uh, it's, it's your call. As far as Brampton is concerned, the PCs are still holding on to majority of the seats, but the Liberals are certainly making a comeback. And Brampton Center, Charmaine Williams, she's losing her seat if the elections were to be held today. So a lot of work to be done by all three parties in the region of Peel. That's our takeaway. That's the big breaking news as far as the provincial results are concerned. Let's quickly move on to the federal. So here is Y Media Main Street poll uh, overall in the region of Peel. We know at the, what the national numbers are, but what are the numbers in the region of Peel? Let's look at the federal numbers overall. Where do we stand today? So when we asked in Brampton, Mississauga, Y Media, Main Street poll survey, here are the numbers I'm going to show you in full screen. It's 36% for the Liberals, and it's 42.3% for the Conservatives. NDP stands at 15.3%, 3.1% for the Green Party, and 1.6% for others. So I must uh, say, say this thing, uh, still, still I would say, it's still a fight between the Liberals and the Conservatives because the Conservative Party at 42.3, uh, the Liberal Party at 36.4. This is, we're talking the region of Peel. We're talking the region of Peel. Uh, Quito, your quick take on, on this one. Yeah, it couldn't be more different than the provincial ballot. You know, it's interesting when people, when we do surveys like this, where we're asking multiple ballot questions and they say, you know, this this couldn't possibly be the same respondents and, and yet it is. So I think a couple of very stark differences. Number one, Jagmeet Singh does very well, much better than Merritt Stiles and, and the provincial MVP does across Peel. Um, you know, there's some resilient strength here for the federal liberals, but, you know, this number for Pierre Polyev and the conservatives is, is you know, 42%. Um, people have made up their minds. If you look at the other number that to me is very stark is the undecided number, like 1% were, it, it, it just highlights the fact that people are very polarized. People have made up their decision about how they're going to vote in the next uh, federal election. It's still 18 months away, uh, potentially, but um, yeah, those are the those are the interesting numbers on the top line. There's some other interesting ones at the ridings. Okay, and uh, we do we still have Kimberly? Uh, Kimberly, can you hear us? Let's check yeah. your audio. Yeah. yeah, it's better now. So, Kimberly, okay. oh, what's your take on on the, on this federal politics? The number that numbers that you're seeing on the screen right now. Yeah, not surprising. I mean, I think it's consistent to what we're seeing, um, you know, across the board where, 
it looks like you know the liberals under under Trudeau are not as popular as they once were, um, and I think that the undecided voters at one uh, percent is an, is a very telling feature as well. That people are very passionate right now about how they feel around the leadership um, that we're looking at federally. It's also not overly surprising to me that you know we often have different provincial governments in Ontario than we do federal governments. So if it's a liberal provincial government, it, it tends to be a federal conservative government and the reverse is also true. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not overly surprised by these numbers at all. And uh, I think we're, we're going to consistently see something that looks like this for the next 18 months or so. All right. So let's quickly get on to uh, the numbers, the writing wise. So this is the first, uh, if you can see on your screen, We'll start with Brampton West. Brampton West, we have not only the sitting member of parliament, Kamal Khera, she's also been the cabinet minister in the Trudeau government. Uh, as far as Brampton is concerned, they get one berth uh, at, at the cabinet, and Kamal Khera has been there. Of course, uh, she was shuffled around in different portfolios, but Kamal Khera has been the cabinet minister. So let's look at Brampton West today. If the elections were held today, uh, Brampton West, 29.2%. But there you go, the Conservatives are at 46.8. What a massive lead there. What a massive lead there at 46.8%. And 19.8% for NDP, Green Party at 4%, and the People's Party of Canada 0.3, other zero. So Kamal Khera, Kamal Khera, 29.2%. So I think this seat clearly seems Brampton West. Brampton West, it looks like it will go to the conservatives if the elections were held today. So this is Brampton West we are talking here. Let's go to the next uh, riding. Let's quickly go on to the next riding. That is Brampton South. Brampton South, Sonia Sidhu. Sonia Sidhu, she's been uh, winning this uh, seat quite comfortably in the last two elections. But 23.4%, the conservative massive lead. It's almost 33% lead, 33% lead in Brampton South, 23.4% for the Liberals, Sonia Sidhu, the Conservative Party is at 56.3%, NDP, it's a collapse for NDP, doesn't, I don't think so, they even exist here, 5%. Uh, so the Green Party at 12.1%, they're still doing better, and People's Party at 3.2%, but the Conservative Party would clearly sweep this riding if the elections were held today. Brampton South. Let's talk about Brampton East now. Brampton East has always been very, very interesting, uh, but here we are, Liberal Party is strong. Wow, what a contrast here. The earlier two ridings, whereas the Liberal Party were clearly behind, but Brampton East holding on his foot very strongly is Maninder Sidhu in Brampton East. Mind you, this riding was held by Liberals earlier as well. Raj Garewal was here, but then uh, when Raj Garewal left, we uh, have Maninder Sidhu here, 52.7%. Uh, that's a strong lead. The Conservatives are trailing behind at 35.4. NDP at 11.5. The Green Party almost decimated to less than 1%, 0.4%. And the People's Party, not many takers for them. So it's clearly a liberal support here in Brampton. So 2-1, if I may call the numbers, in the first three ridings, it's 2-1 in favor of the Conservative Party. Two for the Conservatives and one for the Liberal. Let's go to the next riding here. It's Brampton North. So let's see what's, what are the numbers for Brampton North. Oh, 41.7%, a strong lead once again by the Liberal Party here, 41.7%. The Conservatives are at 38.4, NDP 11.4. This is again, mind you, Jagmeet Singh's backyard, this is where he started, Brampton North. Brampton East, 3% for the Green, and People's Party, 3.1%. So once again, Ruby Sota holding on to this seat, though not a very massive lead, but you would call almost a 3% 3, 3 lead for Ruby Sohota. So 3% lead for Ruby Sohota. So she, it's within the margin of error. Would she hold on to her seat? It's anybody's guess, but for now, it's too all. So two for Liberals, two for the Conservatives. Let's check out the last riding, that is Brampton Centre. This will break the tie. Brampton Centre, again going towards the Liberal. 38.6% for the Liberal Party, 32% for the Conservative, 272 
for NDP. NDP is doing good here at 27.2. Green, 1.6. People's Party and others, not much room for them. So Shafkat Ali, he's the sitting member of parliament. Shafkat Ali holds on to this one from Brampton Centre. So overall, I would say three seats. If, if you look at the Brampton numbers, if the elections were held today, we have a minority government at the federal level. Yes, the elections could happen, technically speaking. But uh, for now, this, the Liberals still have the uh, support of NDP. But if the elections were held today, Brampton, three seats we are seeing for the Liberal Party and two seats uh, for the Conservatives if the elections were held today. The three seats for the Liberal Party, Brampton East, strong candidate, Marinder Sidhu, Brampton North, about 3% lead, not a big lead, but still Ruby Sota would hold on to her seat and Brampton Centre as well. We are seeing Chef Katali holding on to his seat. But Brampton South, Sonia Sidhu and Kamal Khaira, they certainly have a lot of work to do before the next election is announced. The scheduled election is definitely in October 2025, but this is a minority government. Will the elections be held this year? It's anybody's guess. But let's hear from you, Quito. Brampton, what's your take? 3-2 in favour of Liberals. Yeah, it's like a hockey score, I guess. Um, the um, yeah, same caution, I guess I would say about these numbers. One that um, you know we didn't use the the specific candidate names. Incumbency we know does carry a a significant uh, uh, advantage here. So for some of the liberals here that are that are trailing, although it's pretty significant for for a couple of these. Um, ridings here well outside the margin of error even with the smaller uh sample sizes that we're that we're getting at this um at this riding level so um yeah it, it's it, you know given that in the last three elections i, I think all of peel has swept with the exception of of the kaladin um or most of peel has gone red and and pretty substantially so it, it, these should be concerning numbers for federal liberals and, and for some of these uh incumbent mps but like i said to start is there is some resilient strength for the liberal candidates if you look at our federal polling other polls that we see whether it's polling averages or other things that get modeled down um some of these you know some of these writings are, are, are much better than than what the national numbers would suggest. So um, hard to say what that means today. Um, luckily, we I, I don't have to explain that because the election isn't today or tomorrow. It's it's um, whenever Justin Trudeau decides or October of 25, so. All right, so these are the numbers once again. Before we move on to uh, Caledon, uh, uh, I'd like to ask Kimberly, were you surprised or what's your take on the numbers from Brampton? Yeah, no, not really surprised. I mean, I think that um, Brampton Centre is going to be the one to watch with all three parties are really um, neck and neck. So it'll be uh, interesting to see what happens there. But yeah, not not overly surprised by this. Um, and But I think is is probably something that we do need to note and it's of interest is that the undecided voters were all zero. So um you know, people are, are very well aware of uh, how they feel about these candidates and these parties in this area. So, Okay, now quickly, let's move on to the uh, Caledon riding and then I'll show you Caledon riding and Mississauga, then we'll talk about Caledon and Mississauga. But before I do that, once again, a quick recap of the Brampton ridings, if I can show all the Brampton ridings in full screen for you once again, a quick recap. Uh, uh, Brampton West, the riding clearly is going towards the Conservative Party. Brampton West, the incumbent cabinet minister, member of parliament, Kamal Khaira, if the elections were held today, Kamal Khaira would lose her seat. The next one that we see is Brampton North, Ruby Sota holding on to a very narrow lead of only 3%, but Ruby Sota still leading there. Uh, so the Liberals would hold on to this seat very at with a very narrow lead here, but the Conservatives are coming very strong. Quickly moving on to the next riding in, in Brampton, Brampton Centre. Chef Katali, he is uh, there with almost a six and a half percent lead with 38.6 percent, but Brampton Centre is still holding. And as Kimberly was mentioning earlier, yes, the NDP is strong here as well. It's a three-way race in Brampton Centre, NDP, Conservative and the Liberal. Quickly moving on to the next riding. Uh, Brampton South, a massive lead, massive lead here. The Conservatives are at 56.3%. Uh, Sonia Sidhu, she's trailing far behind 
23.4%. If the elections were held today, clearly this seat could go to the Conservative Party of Canada, NDP and others. They're not much of a competition here. We'll quickly move on to the next riding. This is Brampton East. Very solid lead. I think if the Liberals, if I were to mention one seat where the Liberals are very strong, this is a riding which was almost a three race. This is where Jagmeet Singh won. This is where Jagmeet Singh won. This is where the Conservatives won with Bal Gosal. This is where uh, we, we saw Bramley Gore Malton going towards the Liberal Party. And once again, it's with the Liberal Party with Raj Garewal and now, once again, Maninder Sidhu. Maninder Sidhu, very, very strong. Very strong Maninder Sidhu in this, in this riding. Maninder Sidhu. So this, is a, this has now, if we look at the poll, number, uh, poll numbers, the poll survey that we're seeing here, very, very strong riding for the Liberals, 52.7%. So this is a quick recap for Brampton. So why media, Main Street poll survey, Brampton results are out. Three seats could go... Uh, the, uh, the liberal way and two seats for the conservatives. This is Brampton we're talking. Let's quickly have a look at uh, the numbers for Caledon. Caledon, the incumbent member of parliament, Kyle Seebeck, I still remember he was, uh, he was a member of parliament from Brampton earlier, Kyle Seebeck, then he went on to, uh, to his law practice. He came back very strong. I think he's still very strong. I don't see much of a competition here with 48% for Kyle Seebeck in Caledon. And then you have 24% for NDP, liberals trailing in third position, 17.4% there in Caledon. We'll talk about Caledon with our guest, but before I do that, I'll quickly want to highlight the numbers for Mrs. Saga now. So let's quickly move on to Mrs. Saga now. So Mrs. Saga Center, here's another cabinet minister, Omar Al Gabra. So he, he's not running here again, that's what I heard. But uh, if the elections were held today, the liberals would get 37.1%. Conservative party could win this seat. Mississauga Center, 40.1% for them. NDP has 22.1%. Others, they don't have much of a support. Green Party or People's Party of Canada. I see it's between, mainly between the Liberals and uh, Conservatives, but Conservatives leading in this seat. Omar Al Gabra has been very close uh, with Navdeep Bass. There was a time Navdeep Bass left. Now Omar Al Gabra, I think, he's, he's been the cabinet minister, very strong, but lose, almost he's losing. He's, he's been there for quite some time now. So Mississauga Cooksville, let's see what Mississauga Cooksville is offering us. Peter Fonseca, he's still maintaining on this seed, though with a very narrow lead, just two person lead for Peter Fonseca. He's incumbent member of parliament for the Liberal Party. The Conservatives will be strong second here. NDP, Green Party, People's Party, all in single digits. Not much of a competition, but this seat could go to Liberal. So it's almost 1-1 at the start. It's almost 1-1 at the start. Uh, the third. She's a very strong candidate, very active in the community, Ikra Khalid. So uh, if we look at the Mrs. Saga Aaron Mills now. Mrs. Saga Aaron Mills, Ikra Khalid is trailing behind almost 4% points. So 43.3 for Ikra Khalid, Conservative Party 43.9, NDP 10.5 and Green Party and others in single digits. So this seat could go to Conservative Party of Canada if the elections were held today. Almost a 3.5 percentage lead with the conservatives and it's 2-1 for the conservatives. Let's go to quickly go on to the next riding here. The next riding is Mississauga Lakeshore. Mississauga Lakeshore, Charles Souza, finance minister at the provincial level. Now he's at the federal level, incumbent member parliament, but trailing behind, another cabinet minister trailing behind 37.5 and 39.3 for the conservatives, but well within the margin of error here. NDP at 19.6 and we also have uh, Greens party and others less than single digit, but I think the incumbent could lose his seat here, almost uh, one and a half percentage lead, but again within the margin of error. Let's see what the next seat has to offer. So now we move on to Mississauga Malton. So Mississauga Malton, oh, the liberals are trailing far, far behind in Mississauga Malton. Equinder Gahir, he's the incumbent candidate here, 29.4. Almost a 13% lead here. Conservative Party has a 13% lead here, NDP at 9.4, Green Party at 4%. So this seat could go the Conservative way if the elections were held today. Equinder Gahir could lose his seat. Now let's quickly move on to Mississauga Streetswell. Here's another cabinet minister, Rishi Valdez. She's the minister for small business and another cabinet minister could lose her seat. The Conservative Party is at 45.6, NDP 9.6 and 
Green Party all in single digits. So at 40.6, incumbent Rishi Veldes, she could lose her seats here. So that's the big news coming your way. From Y Media Main Street Poll Survey, this is a big breaking news. If the elections were held today, most of the member parliaments from the Liberal Party, they could lose their seats. Most of them could lose their seats if the elections were held today in Brampton and Mississauga. They stand to lose their seats. So let's see what Quito has to say, and then we'll talk with Kimberly. Quito. Yeah, the Mississauga numbers, I guess, is um, similar, very stark. Um, you know, it's interesting to note that in most of the writings, you, you can add up the, the the green, the People's Party, other and undecided, and it's near nearer at zero. It's rounding down to, to, to zero. Um, so certainly polarization of, of opinion is what we're seeing. Uh, it looks like a very clear two-way race. Um, you know, the NDP, in, uh, unlike in Brampton, uh, isn't doing quite as strong as, as past results. Um, that could change. There's a handful of writings there. You know, the NDP is actually surprisingly doing okay in Caledon. Um, but yeah, it, it, uh, there's a few here that could end up being, you know, to me, the one to watch here is the Mississauga Lakeshore, just like the uh, provincial uh, numbers in Lakeshore. It's a closer race. You have a very popular local MP in Charles Souza, former um, provincial cabinet minister, former provincial finance minister, um, who just won in a by-election not that long ago, I guess about two years ago. Um, again, we, we didn't ask the names here, so I would... I would call that one a, a coin toss, and and but Charles could be in for a fight. Um, same with uh, Ikra Khalid, uh, e even Recky Valdez in in um, in Streetsville. That one is right around the margin of error. So um, these are going to be interesting battles between incumbents and and probably pretty strong uh, conservative challengers for the most part. And uh, it, this is going to be the battleground. This is the one, the, the area that everybody says, you know, the 905 belt, but specifically Peel in a federal election. If a conservative leader can't get seats in those ridings, there is no path to a majority government. Um, at least on the surface, it looks like maybe Pierre Polyev has found whatever formula um, his predecessors, Aaron O'Toole and Andrew Scheer, couldn't find in, in, the, in the last two elections. So I, I think that's... Um, pretty interesting. All right. And uh, Kimberly, your take on Mississauga and Kellen and Ridings. Yeah, I mean, uh, similar to Keto, I see that there's going to be a big fight in a lot of those ridings. Um, you know, those the, the polling that we're looking at right now are, you know, they're pretty tight in some of those ridings with um, certainly, you know, those Mississauga battlegrounds. It's, it's going to be interesting to watch. Um, they're, you know, Mississauga Streetsville is is even really close within the margin of error. But again, what I think is interesting is these the voters are very decided. They know what they want, um, and it'll be interesting to watch this play out. Okay, okay, and uh, I wish we had more time, but uh, before I let you go, uh, quickly one minute for uh, each of you. If you want to talk anything that I missed out, definitely feel free to do so. But once again, before we final, uh, finally wrap up this show, I'd like to thank, first of all, Kuto Maggi and his entire team at uh, Main Street Research for doing an amazing job. At Y Media, we will once again commit that, yes, we will be doing lots of poll surveys. Y Media Main Street Poll Survey, we will be broadcasting this program regularly on Channel Y, Y Plus, both these TV channels. You can listen this on Radio Y and the results will be published in Midweek Newspaper and all our digital platforms as well. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us on this uh, uh, inaugural show for Y Media Main Street Poll Survey. Quito, your final thoughts before I let you go. Yeah, I guess I'd say that th these results uh, for Peel, you know, largely mirror what we're seeing on the, on the national stage. Our, our most recent national number had a pretty substantial 17-point lead for for the Conservatives. That's the kind of lead you need uh, to form government. Like I said, Peel region, it, it's the battleground. If you can't win seats in, in Peel, you can't form government. Um, and right now, at least, it looks like Pierre Polyev and his team have kind of solved that um that problem and um, 
lastly, I would say, yeah, I'm very excited about this new uh, project with you and your team and uh, look forward to polling Mississauga and Lower Mainland BC for the BC election later this year and, and other races uh, across Canada and the US. So we're, we're excited to be part of the Y Media team now and uh, thank you so much to yourself. Yeah, thank you so much, Quito. Thank you so much. And Kimberly, anything else you want to add before I let you go? Yeah, you know, I, I uh, congratulate you and and the team at Y Media and um, and Main Street Research for putting this together. I think it gives people a great insight into what we can expect. And certainly as we see the changes and as things move, um, as we get closer to those dates, whether it's the you know by-election in Mississauga for mayor, whether it's the federal election or whether it's the provincial election, you know, watching these numbers, and comparing as the snapshot in time as we move along is going to be really um, informative, I think, for all of your guests. And we know that the credibility of Main Street um, bringing these numbers forward. So congratulations to both of you. And thanks for, very much for having me. Thank you so much once again, Kimberly. And at this point, uh, we'll call it a wrap. Uh, we'd like to thank Kimberly. Thank you so much once, once again, Quito, to you as well and your entire team. And we will carry on. This is one of many. This is one of many. Why media Main Street poll surveys will keep bringing you the public opinion, will keep bringing you the market research here. So we thought we'll start with the political sensex first, but there are many other topics that we will be covering. And please do not forget to send us your feedback. We'll definitely flash the numbers on your screen right now. The Why Media number will be there. So you can give us your feedback at Why Media. How did you like Why Media Main Street poll survey? In case you want to uh, pick up any topic, don't forget to give us a call. Don't uh, forget to text us. You can text us or call us this number. So we'll definitely love to hear what is your opinion uh, on Why Media Poll Survey. Quito, thank you so much. It was Player hosting you. This is the first time we were together on a show. Player hosting you uh, and looking forward to many more. Kimberly, we've done many TV shows earlier as well. Player hosting you as well. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion. Stay tuned with Why Media. Thank you. Biggest South Asian media group, Y Media. Why?